Plate tectonic theory recognizes that the surface of the Earth is broken up into a few dozen rigid plates that are all moving relative to one another by sliding along a partially molten zone deep within the mantle. These plates can have one of three types of boundaries with each other, including divergent, convergent, and transform. Divergent margins form where the plates are moving apart, convergent margins form where the plates are moving toward each other, and transform. Or strike-slip margins form where the plates are sliding past each other. Along convergent plate margins, one tectonic plate is typically pushed or subducted beneath another plate along deep oceanic trenches. In most cases a dense oceanic plate is subducted beneath a less dense, overriding continental plate, and a chain of volcanoes known as a volcanic arc forms on the overriding plate. Accretionary wedges are structurally complex parts of these subduction zone systems that form on the landward side of the trench from material scraped off from the subducting plate as well as trench fill sediments. They typically have wedge-shaped cross-sections and one of the most complex internal structures of any tectonic L. Meant known on Earth. Parts of accretionary wedges are characterized by numerous thin units of rock. Layers that are repeated by numerous faults, known as thrust faults, along which the same unit may be stacked upon itself many times. Other parts or other wedges are characterized by a relatively large section of rocks with relatively few faults, and still other sections are dominated by folded units, packages of rocks. They also host rocks known as tectonic melanges that are complex mixtures of blocks and thin slivers of rocks surrounded by thrust faults. The rock types in these melanges are quite diverse and typically include griwak, basalt, chert, and limestone, characteristically encased in a matrix of a different rock type, such as shale or serpentinite, some accretionary wedges contain small blocks or layers of high-pressure, low-temperature metamorphic rocks known as blue schists that have formed deep within the wedge where pressures are high and temperatures are low because of the insulating effect of the cold subducting plate. These high-pressure rocks were brought to the surface by structural processes. Accretionary wedges grow by the gradual process of scraping sedimentary and volcanic rock mate. Real from the trench and subducting plate, which constantly pushes new material in front of and under. The wedge's plate tectonics drives plate convergence. The type and style of material offscraped and incorpo. Rated into the wedge depends on the type of material near the surface on the subducting plate. Subducting. Plates with thin layers of deep sea sediments such as chert on their basaltic surface yield packages in the accretionary wedge dominated by basalt and chert rock types, whereas subducting plates with thick sequences of griwak sediments yield packages, thrust slices of rock from the subducting plate in the accretionary wedge dominated by griwak. Prisms of accreted rock at convergent plate boundaries may also grow by a process known as underplat-ing, where packages are added to the base of the accretionary wedge, a process that typically causes folding of the overlying parts of the wedge. The fronts or toes of accretionary wedges are also char, characterized by material slumping off of the steep slope of the wedge into the trench. This material can then be recycled back into the accretionary wedge to form even more complex structures. The processes of upscraping and underplating work together and rotate rock layers and structures to steeper orientations. In this way rock layers rotate from an orientation that is near horizontal at the toe of the wedge to near vertical at the back of the wedge. Accretionary wedges are thought to behave mechanically somewhat as if they were piles of sand or snow bulldozed in front of a plow. They grow into a triangular wedge shape in cross-section that increases its slope until it becomes oversteepened and mechanically unstable, which then causes the toe of the wedge to advance by thrusting, or the top of the wedge to collapse by normal faulting. Either of these 
Two processes can reduce the slope of the wedge and let it to become more stable. In addition to the evidence for thrust faulting in accretionary wedges, structural geologists have documented many examples of normal faults where the tops of the wedges have collapsed, supporting models of extensional collapse of oversteepened wedges. Accretionary wedges are forming above nearly every subduction zone on the planet. However, these accretionary wedges presently border open oceans that have not yet closed by plate tectonic processes. Eventually the movements of the plates and continents will cause the accretionary wedges to become involved in plate collisions that will dramatically change the character of the accretionary wedges. They are typically overprinted by additional shortening, faulting, folding, and high temperature metamorphism and intruded by magmas related to arcs and collisions. These later events, coupled with the initial complexity and variety, make identification of accretionary wedges in ancient mountain belts difficult, and prone to uncertainty.